like, but the fact that you're even saying that you will not engage in it means you know that you did something worthy of Worth being removed. Stepping aside. Worthy of being removed. But I know they already have a plan. I mean, we already heard Rick Joyner talk about the restoration. Literally like, day one. Day one, he was ready to restore him before he even came out with this. It's like insane. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Wake Up and Win podcast. We're your hosts, Christina. Hello. And co-host, me. I hope y'all are doing well. Um, it's been a wild few days. <laughs> Everybody's like, yo, where y'all at? Where y'all at? <laughs> well, we got three kids and and run a business. And uh and 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 you know, honestly, what's nuts is like we'll put out a we'll put a we'll put out a podcast or we'll have our video guy over do like a big old thing and all of a sudden that's when things start the day that we do it it's like <laughs> boom this happens this happens we're like oh geez i know i feel like about 15 things happen since our like, let's just get podcast. a little mic <laughs> let's just come upstairs in our little uh bonus room that's clearly not crazy professional and uh, let's just give some information well, what do we got here um okay cool um anyway we are going to dive in today because clearly some things have gone down in the last five days. We've got a concession from Mike. Oh, sorry. A confession, I guess. Mm -hmm. Concession. Confession or concession. I'm not sure which one, but apparently Mike Bickle has said something and uh, we've got a new, uh, we've got a new PR guy for IHOP. They're a fixer. They got themselves in Olivia Pope. Say what? Yeah. They got Everything. themselves an Olivia Pope and um, and he's killing it. Frankly, he is killing it for the job he's doing as far as um, utilizing certain information while not utilizing other information. Using uh, Twitter trolls to intimidate Jane Doe and try to release her Post, Posting, then deleting things, cool. posting, posting certain things, then deleting within 30 seconds. So uh, which we have record of that. But anyway, we got to get we got to get uh get started we could go off i think we're gonna have to do a few different videos yeah. addressing each of these things holes i think needs his own video yeah yeah um, but we'll we have gotta... to bring the proof of the truth for those things right. though the but proof of, not wanna... necessarily just the truth we don't care so much just about the truth just the proof of the truth that's what we're really looking for right but anyway guys um let's look let's dig into the truth here today and uh frankly let's just dig in, in into the information that's public at yeah. the end of the day we are armchair investigators okay we are. all we are is armchair investigators all right Pitiful. uh i mean it's not Pathetic. like we don't even have like magnifying glass we don't have all we have is google and the internet i mean what a joke right but us armchair investigators out here we're going to just report on what's already public uh we're not going to try to be breaking news we're going to try to just uh, help you guys walk through this and i'll say this a lot of sarcasm aside um we we love you guys. We love everybody that's tuning in. We love our IHOP KC friends. Um, I mean, four four and a half years on the night watch, pacing that floor back and forth from 2008 to 2012. I had so many experiences with the Lord, with good friends in that place, leading, running with people. Um, I mean, pouring out our lives into that place to build that ministry, but really because the Lord led so many of us to that place and people would go, oh, how could God have led you there? Hey, look, a broken cistern, right? Um, doesn't mean that it wasn't necessarily always broken, right? I mean, it's it's become broken. And even within that type of thing, God can utilize whatever he wants to work in your life. But I'll just say this, um, to to downplay everybody and just throw like that everybody that's looking at this right now and just say oh these people are just bitter and jaded and just this that and the other it's just not the case guys it's not the case there's a lot of people that are hurt though i'll tell you that there were people that were hurt prior to this there were people that have been hurt over the years and not been given a voice um because there has been the mishandling of uh sexual assault allegations within their within their um their ministry and it's happened. And so here we are on this side of it and we all want the truth. Okay. I, I really hope that the proof of the truth can fully come out, but I want the truth regardless. And we're not stupid and you can't treat us all like we're just fifth graders. Well, he said, he's sorry for some basic, you know, bad stuff. Like we're not stupid. We don't sit around and not have the, 
access to information. So maybe 25 years ago, you could put out a statement like this and people are like, well, I guess, I guess, man, God bless him. You know, I guess like, and then the other statement comes out like months later and uh, months later. Now information is so fast, frankly, like they tried to hide who the third, the new third party was. And they said, we won't, we're not going to make that public. I'm like, are you kidding me? You think we're fifth graders? Like what in the world? Actually, fifth graders could actually find it themselves. Yeah, I so I really believe that IHOP is demeaning a lot of the, the people and trying to create division and sides where there's not sides on this. There is truth. And we all want that truth. Some people are angry. Some people are happy. Some people are saying, oh, Mike's great. Give him mercy. Some people are saying, oh my gosh, we need more of the truth. Like at the end of the day, we all want the truth, especially if we've been a part of IHOP's community. So let's not, I will not let these, these new people coming on stage divide us in that way. We all want the truth. So let's dive into Mike's statement here. Let's share the screen and read it for a little bit. Where is share screen? Here we go. All right. Go for it, Christina. All right. Let's see. International House of Prayer founder Mike Bickle confesses to inappropriate behavior 20 years ago. International House of Prayer Kansas City founder Mike Bickle today released a statement admitting to inappropriate behavior 20 years ago. I sadly admit that 20 plus years ago, I sinned by engaging in inappropriate behavior. My sins were real, Bickle wrote. However, he added, I am not admitting to the more intense sexual activities that some are suggesting. Should we just read through the whole thing and then talk about it? Or should we just, just, just read it and just, keep going? Yeah, well, just, what, I mean. Well, all right, all right. Yeah, go for it. Bickle said he hates his sin and sincerely repented in a way that resulted in receiving assurance from God, followed by a daily resolve to live holy in all of my ways. Today, I remain sorrowful about the pa those past failures. Bickle's confession comes seven weeks after he was publicly accused of sexually abusing multiple women over several decades. It also comes a week and a half after an alleged victim told her story to the Roy's report in an exclusive interview. According to the woman, Bickle's abuse began when she was 19 and he was in his 40s and continued for several years. At the time, the woman said she was working for Bickle and under his spiritual direction, making his misconduct clergy sexual abuse. She added that her sexual interactions with Bickle included everything but intercourse. Bickle said he is now making a public statement because I was recently confronted about things that I said or did 20 plus years ago, things I believe were dealt with and under the blood of Jesus. Since this has now become public, I want to repent publicly. In the statement, Bickle claimed he had written a first draft of this st statement on October 28th. However, at the time, false allegations of sexual abuse were being circulated against me. Bickle says he was given legal advice to wait for several Sorry. reasons. <laughs> These include creating, included creating the misunderstanding that I was confessing to the false allegations that were circulating. I'm very sorry that it took so long for this personal statement to come out. This delay created additional pain, anguish, division, and more so, more for so many people that I love. I'm deeply sorry for this. Sorry for what? For for waiting based yeah. on his legal legal advice? But, Wait, waiting to repent of what? Boz, who's representing the woman Bickle is referring to in his statement, expressed frustration with Bickle's confession. What in the world does he mean by inappropriate behavior? Boz wrote in a statement to TRR, that is undoubtedly a very deliberate word choice as it could mean anything. Furthermore, what does he mean when he denies more intense sexual activities? Does that mean the reference inappropriate conduct involves less intense sexual activities? What is he saying? Though this statement is a page long, I don't believe it actually says much. Why not simply step forward into the light and embrace transparency and trust God with the consequences? This is all so pitiful and sad. Trust God with the consequences. So Boz Trevichian is Billy Graham's grandson. And Boz was a um, an attorney, is an attorney. And for years, he was doing attorney work. And what he started to run into was he said, you know, they would, I was listening to a podcast with him like a while back. And he was saying, I just kept getting these cases of, you know, uh, um, assault and, and abuse and things like that. So then I started to run into them and I found that they were in the church, that they were in nonprofit and church organizations, a lot of them. 
And he said, those just really affected me a lot because of my background and my family. And I really noticed that they didn't have proper res res representation almost every single time. And everybody would always come on the side of the pastor or the minister or the leader. And these people would just get kicked to the side. He said, I really de developed a passion for it. So he created uh, grace. What is it called again? Um, Godly response. In religious or religious, no. something like that. Um but anyway, it's it's like a it's his organization that really works for those within churches and ministries to provide representation, but not even just representation because he represents victims. But initially, what the hope was is that they would have reached out to Grace to do a third party investigation independently into IHOP Casey's organization as a whole. Now, if they had done that, then Grace would have come in. But frankly, Grace would have denied that request because they already did one of these. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but they already Grace already did an investigation, third party investigation into IHOP Kansas City. And when they did it, they found lots of problems. And you can we'll link that video below so that you can watch it because that's important. This this situation, and here's what here's what you will not hear from the public platform um crisis manager. You will not hear of previous issues with this type of thing. You will not hear of how um, Grace actually exposed their lack of systems that being in place uh, to protect people from these situations or proper reporting systems. You will not hear the fact that there's already been, even since the ELT came on October 28th and said, if any of you have experienced this, please email this uh, email address. Well, we know that there's people that have emailed that email address and got no good response and got thrown to the side. Like literally they do not have systems in place to take care of these things. They have not created them and they don't, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to like judge people's intentions, but it seems like they do not care in a way that is appropriate to, um, for, for this kind of thing. So the fact that they continue to say that, that, of uh, the allegations or that the uh, victim advocates are the people that are making this thing long and drawn out. That's not the case. So let's let's dive yeah, more. Let's to, focus on this. Yeah. I feel like that is a, a whole nother topic. It is. It is. I'm we just make an off. entire video. On. Okay. So let's get into his actual let's, statement. Yeah. Do you want to read this, Christina? So this is December 12th, 2023. Let's, I guess I got into Boz there for a second because people need to know who Boz is. And he's like this right here. I'm just going to say this and then let's read Mike's whole statement. He says to them, Mike's page is a long page statement, right? And it doesn't say much at all. Yeah. That's exactly what I was getting when I was reading mm -hmm. it. Why don't you simply step forward? And, and people will be like, look, Mike's made a statement. Mike, Mike hasn't, this is not a statement. Okay, it's a st quote statement, but like, where is Mike? Where is he? You know, you told me about years ago, you actually grew up in a church where um, the, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'll take that out. It's fine. I can literally cut that out. Yeah, so they listen to this. All right. So we've heard stories. We know people where situations have happened because many of you listen to this, like where pastors or leaders have failed. And what did they do? They came forward and admitted to it. Yes. And then they stepped down or whatever. But it's very rare that you have like a, you know, to much who's given as much as required. So you got this guy, Mike Bickle, global influence, not afraid to stand on stage all the way up to October 20th and say prophesy that Alec, that um prophesy that mm -hmm. what that uh accusation is coming literally up to October 20th he's prophesying that accusations are coming and this that and the other but he already knew that Jane he'd already been in email con conversation with Jane Doe's husband so so for him to do that up until October 20th and then once this comes out to be like oh I'm just stepping back. I'm hiding. I'm, or he wouldn't say hiding. I'm stepping back because Stuart Greaves has told me to step back. Why don't, like Boz says, and but guess what? Boz has done this many, many times. Boz is going, why don't you just step out into the light, embrace transparency, and trust God with the consequences? This reminds me of uh, the uh, step program or something. You know, remember how, how, uh, Step program? Yeah, the 12 step program that oh. would like to celebrate recovery. <laughs> and these, like, you know, can, like basically surrender yeah. or whatever. And then uh, and then trust God with the consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Like 
And he says, this is all pitiful and sad. And I agree. Um, we would love to actually hear Mike come on stage and talk, not just put out a statement like this, but because it's so vague. But anyway, let's get into it. You can read yeah, it. Yeah, it's so vague. Um, yeah, I don't even know how to do this. Do really, you want me to read but, it? Well, not necessarily. I guess I'm just more like there's so much to say about it. Like, first of all, since this was already in the article before we get to it um, about him having this since October 28th. but let's see. All right. Let's just read it when we get there. I'll yeah, say it, but I, I have something to say about that too. It's just so it's all so insane. Yeah. All right. To my family and friends with a very heavy heart, I want to express how deeply grieved I am that my past sins have led to such pain, confusion, and division in the body of Christ in this hour. I sadly admit that 20 years, 20 plus years ago, I sinned by engaging in inappropriate behavior. My moral failures were real. I am not admitting to the more intense sexual activities that some are suggesting. Okay, let's stop there and talk about it because he doesn't really say anything else about it after that at all. This is pretty much it. Um, so he starts off, he's sad, he's grieved, um, like let's feel bad for him. And then want everybody wants to make sure everybody knows it's like 20 plus years ago. Yeah. But, but they don't emphasize the with a 19 year old. They don't want to say those numbers, but they want to say the 20 plus years ago all the time, but nobody wants to like bring up the fact that she was 19. Um, 20 I think, plus years ago, 20 plus years ago, I sinned. 20 plus years older than you. Also, younger, let's, younger than you. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I sinned by engaging in inappropriate behavior. My moral failures were real. So obviously I'm not admitting to the, and this is the part that I think they were hoping everybody would skip through and not notice and just think, oh, he's not admitting to the sexual part. No, no, no. He's not admitting to the more intense sexual part, which like, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. um, what is like, is he admitting to the less intense sexual activities? She said they did everything but intercourse. Is he admitting to everything but intercourse? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we don't we don't want to get like super graphic or anything. Mm -hmm. um, right. Parents are watching. Uh -huh. But like this doesn't make sense. Um, so, so like he is admitting to sexual activities and something else. I saw somebody point out that even him saying I am not admitting to does not mean that he's denying it doesn't mean he's denying it. So that's just like the language of it all. It's like, I am not, I am neither confirming or denying. It's clear that he's had legal advice, which you go, well, of course he's going to get legal advice. He's getting accused of this, that, and the other. Well, why is he admitting to anything right now? Well, he's going to admit to truth. Okay. So you mean he's going to admit to engage? Why not be more straightforward? Why not be more straightforward? Why not be more honest and open? I sin by engaging in an appropriate behaviors. My moral failure is real. I'm not admitting to more intense sexual activities. What about less intense sexual activities? Is that what you're admitting to? Um, I hate my sin and I see it as serious and grievous before holy God. I take all sin seriously. So on those occasions, I occasions quickly- Occasions with an ass, not one occasion, occasions. On those occasions, which by the way, if you don't know that Jane Doe's statement and story, which Mike wouldn't have come out with this ever unless Jane Doe did. And I want to encourage you guys to, to take, take uh, think about this. Okay. We know based on Mike Bickle's emails that he has been financially supporting Jane Doe and her husband, their ministry for many, many years. For Jane Doe to do this, she has now put herself in the target of one of the largest multi-million dollar charismatic ministries in the nation, targeting them now targeting. Okay. Oh, well, she's just trying to gain this, that money, this, that and really well, first and foremost, she lost money immediately. Mike said it in his emails to Jane Doe's husband. If she does this, I will have to bring, take back my support, not because I'm angry, but because I don't want it to come across Which, as a bride. If you don't know what he's talking about, if you're just finding this because you're just now saying like, oh, Mike Bickle had a moral failure. What is this about? Go back. We have an entire video about his email. Two videos. That was released to emails, Jane Doe's husband. Part one. Where he um, threatened her, threatened to release um, some of her emails, which- Talk about that for a second. He threatened- He said, if in you a go veiled public, threat, if you go public- I won't do it, but somebody from my family might release some of your emails- That show- Gloating or- Her gloating over me. 
So he's literally talking. This man is 68 years old, folks. I want you to hear this. He's 68 years old. When he was 42, she was 19. Oh, yeah. When she was 42, she was 19. Right. So that now he's uh, this is uh, what? 20 years later, 26 years later. So she's in her 40s. And he's saying, I have emails of her gloating over how a godly of a man I am and this, that and the other. Do you think that matters? Do you think that makes it look any better than the fact that you had had interactions that were sexual in nature? You did not, you were not faithful to your wife on occasions. You have the S there, occasions, maybe not the more intense. Okay, well, she says in her thing that everything happened except for the deal. Okay, she says that everything happened except for the deal. You guys can uh, read between the lines there, but everything else happened is what she says. So, so Mr. Bickle, like I had somebody literally tweet at me this morning, don't attack the Lord's anointed. I'm telling you, and I said, the Lord's anointed, the Lord's anointed. Okay. So. So what are we supposed to do? Let all of these women just be like, yes, yes. Like, we're supposed, supposed to, well, here's, to here's here? what we're supposed to do. And I want to just address everybody covering this because I want to give you real quick. We're not in ministry. We're not in ministry. I, I, somebody told us today, they're like, this is your mission. I don't, I don't even know. We're just talking to you guys. We run a business. We have kids. We hadn't touched ministry in years. And But I'll tell you this. Most ministers are so afraid to actually rip the veil, tear the veil for real on this, because this is not a confession. This is a concession, pulling your emotions to feel bad for him, where in this statement, I want to talk to every single one of you pastors, ministers that are saying, that are saying, oh, look what he's done. Praise God. Let's give him mercy. Where in this statement does he give any apology to Jane Doe? I don't know how old you guys are out there. I'm 41. My daughter's six. Okay. Let's just say my daughter's 20. If I found this out, if I found this out, even a quarter of what her, of what her allegations are, even a, a, minute minuscule percent data point were true, I would be livid. And I would say this man is not fit for continual ministry. Now, let's say we find it out 25 years later. Well, why in the world has he been safe to mentor our children for 25 years? And just because he's contributed a lot to the body of Christ, when I'm telling you guys, we see as man sees. We see as man sees, but this man has hidden sin for 25 years and mentored our children for 25 years. And he only is bringing this out publicly because it's being exposed. That's the only reason why he's doing it. He repented privately to Jesus. Jesus covered his sins with Jesus's blood. And this man has been living in that hidden sin for 25 years. Clean conscience, go to bed. Same thing Stuart Grief said. I go to bed with a clean conscience. I'm telling you what, guys, I, I don't know what your I don't know what your feelings of clean conscience. That's fine but you are accountable to the body of Christ because your voice is going to the body of Christ. This is not okay. We're not okay with it. Maybe the old guard is. Maybe Rick Joyner will come in and restore you back to the pulpit. Maybe Todd Bentley will come in and clap for you and restore you back to the pulpit. Maybe all the old guard will come and restore you back to the pulpit, but we will not stand for it anymore. We're absolutely done with it. We're absolutely done with this. We don't want our children mentored by this sickness anymore. And God is shaking his whole temple and he's tearing down every single bit of this lack of integrity in this abusive culture that protects abusers with Matthew 18 and organizational structures that protect abusers. Where's the statement about Jane Doe, Mr. Bickle? Where is the statement? Where's the apology? Where's the apology to her husband? Where's the apology to her children? No, all you've done in this statement is to garner sympathy for yourself. And all you did, Stuart Greaves, was garner sympathy for how hard you worked on, on this before you stepped down to let Eric Volz and I work so hard. I did my best. Listen, we've loved you. We've appreciated you, but I'm telling you, this is not how it should have been. And this is not on the advocacy group. This is on you guys. There's continual deception left and right. We will speak nothing of the deeds of darkness. Rather, we will expose them. And we will not stop until full disclosure is exposed. Who I preach. Sorry, Christina. She's like, well, hold on. No, that's good. That was good. I want to say, um, hold on. Why do you? Would you because I, I just uh, figured I just went so long on that. Well, that we I just read. wanted to say, um, that 
I was I was saying something there on the exposure or on the the families. Oh, or, yeah. oh, quickly. This will be another topic, a whole nother story of itself. But in the emails from Mike Bickle to Jane Doe's husband, he threatened to release emails that she wrote the same day that Mike Bickle apologizes or releases this statement. An email gets released. Guess what happens on Twitter? um, These little Twitter trolls start releasing Jane Doe's emails and even her name, which they deleted, which we'll talk about this later. But at this point, Mike Bickle, ELT, you do not get the benefit of the doubt from me. No longer. That was a sick, sick move to release her emails and her name, you are putting her in danger and you know that, and you are intimidating her and every other Jane Doe that wants to come forward. Jeez. It's sickening and it's actual evil. So I don't care about being like intense or being emotional or calling it what it is because it was evil. Okay. So that happens just so everybody knows after Mike Bickle's apology, he releases Jane Doe's emails or gets a internet troll and, to and, do his and dirty the work. the way that him. he set it it's up. Disgusting. It is disgusting. These guys are actual monsters. Monsters. Quote me on that. Allegedly. They're alleged monsters. No, I don't care. I don't care. I saw it. It's disgusting. And you're not sorry or else you would not have released those emails. It's sickening. And your little internet trolls are disgusting. And, so. and they're allegedly connected to his family yeah but that's fine his family um, which is exactly what he said he was like someone in my family might you know he said i would never these. do this i would never want anything bad to happen to her but i know people that do not like her and if this happens they will release they may they may release we have to do we'll, a side by side of yeah we'll do a side by side of the email with what's happening um because Just go re- it's like, insane. This but is, I don't want to give I don't want to give too much play to the actual internet troll. I like so that. That's why I'm even guys, even uh even I'll just say even Shiloh Bickle, his granddaughter, is speaking up right now. Mm-hmm. His granddaughter. Uh, because people are talking about being silent and just let the attorneys let the process and shiloh says silence does not honor god silence does not lead to the church becoming well jesus flipped tables he boldly proclaimed truth and rebuked evil where are our pastors and leaders when we look to them to shepherd and pastor us to stand firm against darkness and to walk in authority instead they have remained silent and allowed sin to be emboldened for grief and loss to be furthered so much truth in these simple words from Lisa Gottschall, she said, the opposite of gossip is not silence. We've got to speak up. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into this this (laughs) statement. Let's see. All right. Uh, Literally no idea where we were. Maybe I take sin seriously. Let me, let me read it. Cause you just, okay. I take all sin seriously. So on the occasions I quickly, and on these occasions, I quickly and sincerely repented in a way that resulted in receiving assurance from God which we remember he made Jane Doe pray psalm it, over them. He She told her story and said, anytime these things would happen, he would make me pray Psalm 51 over us and repent for us. So he quickly repented along with Jane Doe anytime these things happened. And, uh, and then he would receive assurance from God. Okay. So these are things that he receives with inwardly, these feelings inwardly, without realizing that he is not fit for ministry and to minister to our children. He's leading a young, I want to remind you, He's leading a young adult move it, movement. He's been doing that for 26 years. Which also <laughs> along these same lines, like I'm I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm not a preacher. But even I know that's not repenting. Repenting is whenever you turn away and you go, not that you do it for four years, keep doing it, having her pray Psalm over you guys and then keep doing it on occasions with an S multiple times. That's not repenting. That's spiritual manipulation. Okay. All right. Where are we at? Um, Okay. To this day, I am sorrowful about those past failures. This episode is brought to you by Wake Up and Win Insurance. We help clients all over the nation with their term life, whole life, or universal life insurance. And we're definitely happy to help you with a consultation. And we're hiring all over the nation, full-time and part-time positions, work from home. Check the description below for more info. Okay, great. Uh, I am anguished that my past sins have caused great pain for my wife and family. Actually, that is very sad. Yeah, that is, is very sad. My wife and my family, along with the IHOP KC family and others. Wh- where is Jane Doe in this? Where's Jane Doe? Like, you're sad that it's messing up your family and your ministry and yourself. That's what you're sad about. 
At least that's what I'm reading here. I honestly would like to, I honestly would like to trust that Mike is not like this out there. This is so shocking to me. I am deeply sorry, but he's probably given what to say by a lawyer, like using his own words, given what to say by a lawyer. I'm deeply sorry that my sin put the IHOPKC leadership and community in a very painful and difficult position. I asked my family for forgiveness. I now ask for the, what about Jane Doe? This is mind blowing. I don't know if you guys can see this. Those of you that say, man, we're so thankful he finally gave a confession. It's called a concession. Where is the actual sorrow for your sin? Not how it affects you and your ministry and what you built. You go, well, he's stepping aside from ministry. Yeah, kind of. Give it two, three years is kind of like, but not even about that. It's his legacy that he's tainted. That's why he's sorry. His ministry that he built, that's why he's sorry. Where is Jane Doe in this? Where's Jane Doe? Some may wonder why I'm now just making a public statement 20 plus years later. He likes to say the 20 plus. Mm -hmm. It is because I recently confronted, I was recently confronted about these things I said or did 20 plus, 20 plus years, years ago. Things I believe were dealt with under the blood. Guys, this is not how this works. This is hyper grace. This is hyper grace. By the way, I was a hyper grace proponent back in 2012, 2013. And that's why IHOP KC didn't like me because I was following like Joseph Prince and like other, like what people would call hyper grace guys, uh, more out there teachings and stuff. But what I'm reading right here now, I got out of all that, by the way. Um, but what I'm reading right here is hyper grace. You, you send, you do something bad. Then you just say, okay, I push delete and move on. That's what Mike says. I push delete and move on every day. I push delete. And God assures me that I'm under the blood of Jesus. What about people confess your sins to one another that you may be healed, right? Confess your sins to one another. There are, there are, there are standards for a leader, a pastor, an elder, and that is not how this works. Okay. Um, I asked my family forgiveness. I asked, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. I wrote the first draft on October 28th of this statement, but at that very same time, false allegations of sexual abuse were being circulated. So he's already turning to the false ones in his apology letter. He's already talking about false allegations. I was giving legal advice to wait, to make my statement public for several important reasons, including creating the misunderstanding. Well, there's a lot of misunderstanding in this statement right mm -hmm. here. And the guy that y'all are putting on stage, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Uh, creating misunderstanding that I was confessing to the false allegations that were circulating. I'm very sorry that it took so long for this personal statement to come out. This delay created additional pain, anguish, division, and far more in so many people that I love. I am deeply sorry. I want to speak to this real quick. So you had this ready October 28th, and but you didn't release it because you didn't want it to create the misunderstanding that you were confessing to the false allegations. So why didn't you just release it saying the exact same thing you just did to explain that you weren't confessing to those false allegations? Makes right. no sense. You could have released this and you could have saved a lot of people. <laughs> but the truth is, I think, I think the truth is it was released because of the brave whistleblowers at IHOP KC, like Gabe Hancock, and Jason Carr. Jason Carr and that that Royce report came out and people already know that you confessed to doing these things and that Stewart told people that you did. Dan Bohai. So this is not a statement. This is a response. This is a force to wow. the, yeah. the, um, the Royce report article. And this is how it's going to go. It looks like is he will only respond. Yeah. And I'll say this too, just to those watching, um, like, more will continue to drop. And it's not just going to be like, th this is not a cancel culture campaign, just FYI. Like, yes, within the community of people that want to see Mike Bickle actually openly come out and confess to what he's done or come out and say, like to the people in that community, there's all kinds of different people. But I'll tell you one thing, like at least for us, I have never been a cancel culture person. I'm super annoyed by cancel culture. We got canceled in 2016 for being too conservative, like literally in our liberal community. We got canceled. Um, hang on just a second. We got canceled. Our business got canceled in a in, in our artist business back in the day. So here's my point is like, we're not all about cancel culture based on this, that or the other. No, we literally are looking for full expression of truth. That's what we want. We want full light and truth to be on this. Not a big, uh, you got a guy that won't meet with just a quick reminder. 
um, there was Brian Kim, Dwayne Roberts, and uh, who's it? Wes Martin, literally with Jane Doe's husband to come and meet with Mike after Jane Doe met privately with Mike to confront him about this stuff. Then uh, he brought these other men, and guess what? They would not allow them to come in. Stuart Grease would not allow these men to come in and meet with Mike. He wouldn't allow those those two or three men to meet with him. That's that's their Matthew 18. Bring one, then bring multiple. They were trying to do what these guys say, but Stuart would not allow it because they don't want it to be exposed. I also want to say in that first Roy's report, report <laughs> it's hard to say, Roy's report article, um, it said that Mike denied to Jane Doe's husband, these allegations denied them and said that he meant that whenever his wife died, they would do ministry together. And he thought Jane Doe was so pure, it's her fault, that he thought she was so pure, she would never take it romantically. So it's interesting that he's admitting to this inappropriate behavior. And he's saying that he had this written October 28th and was ready to let everybody know. But the Royce report Jane Doe's husband said that he denied it. And even in his own emails to Jane Doe, why didn't you say this in your emails to Jane Doe's husband that were released? Yep. Like, it's not true. It, you know, this it's is like, not true. It's not matching up. It's not matching up at all. Yeah. And. um. OK. All right. So, OK, so since book? late October, terrible things have been written against me in various communications, blogs, articles, posts. That didn't have to be that way. It didn't have to be that way. Like, all you had to do is come out and say it. I did this. I did not do this. Then the conversation is completely different. Um, that described me and various sinful things that I allegedly did. There are many misrepresentations of my words and actions in these communications, including statements that are out of context, greatly exaggerated or blatantly false. Okay, greatly exaggerated, out of context. I think he... Well, uh, the Diane uh, prophecy, yeah, exactly out of context. He that she was gonna die so they could do ministry together, not get married. Yeah. Well, I ask that my family and friends do not defend me. Uh, sure. Um, as I, you send them your emails to blast all we, over. There is an email. We have an email. Yeah, we have an email. So I just want to point out this statement right here. I ask that my friends and families do not defend me. Guess what? We have a, an email from Mike Bickle that is talking about the whistleblower, one of the whistleblowers. Uh, we have that email and it also has one of a, a guy from Twitter on there that he's following him. Mike is following the one who's this, releasing Jane Doe's email. The one who released name. her name and then pulled it offline. That is something that Mike said, look what this guy's saying. And it's to his, it's to his family members. So he's saying, I'm asking my family not to defend me. No, this is a public statement that God has always let, let me keep going for a second. I, I have confidence that the Lord will speak concerning what he sees about me in his timing. Please do not engage in debates on social media to defend me. And please do not criticize those who are voicing their disdain. Please only speak blessing to them in this way. We can minimize the divisiveness that the enemy has planned. It does. Is the enemy involved in the divisiveness? Of course, but you know what he was involved in your uh, sexual, your sexual mis whatever we, your allegedly mistakes, moral failures that you did not confess to early on. That is the door that was opened, not by people coming in and being like, I want to be divisive. No, expose these things in the house of God, expose them. We're not going to be silent about this stuff because we don't want it to perpetuate in the next generation. Literally, we got 18 year olds contacting us, Mike, from your ministry that grew up in your ministry that are jaded now watching this. And they're going, well, here's more information I have. I have this information too. I saw this uh, growing up there too. I saw this. Do you want this information? We're getting story after story and something perpetuated from Paul Kane to Bob Jones, where these guys also had sexual, moral sexual failures and were not faithful. And now it's perpetuated to you. And now it's gone down in your ministry where these things aren't handled well. And the spotlight is on and it's not going to turn off. Okay. I want to say one thing too about this whole statement. There is unfortunately a Mike Bickle persona that is for the audience, for the public. And that's what this statement is. Whenever it is just this humble, godly, I'm asking that my friends and family do not defend me. This is what he wants the public to think of him. But behind closed doors, we now know that he is um, getting people he is sending out these emails, getting his family members to disperse them on social media. Um, 
So you just have to look at it and know there is a behind the scenes Mike Bickle. There is one that's in his home on his VPN um, delegating tasks to people to smear Jane Doe. That's right. That's what's happening. And it's unfortunate. And so eventually, like, you got to look behind the curtain. But this right here is all for show. This is the show. This statement is the show. And it's not even a good one because he didn't even do a good job at it. But he's trying to still give off that. I was like clean by Jesus's blood. Like it's so demeaning actually is what it is. Yeah. It's so demeaning. You're talking to us like we're in children's church, fifth graders. Like, yeah, go ahead. And then also I have confidence that the Lord will speak concerning what he sees and says about me and his timing. Do you mean Vols? Do you mean the fixer that you hired? Because he wants everyone, even though they've gone up on stage and said they hired a crisis management firm, but he still is trying to pretend like he's doing this for the Lord to speak concerning what he says. You hired a fixer and he's going on social media already smearing the advocates saying this is all their fault for the delay. We are not stupid. We are not stupid. You are not waiting for the Lord to speak for you. You are letting Vols speak for you. And you even said earlier, your, your lawyer um, encouraged you not to post this. So you are not listening to the Lord. You are listening to your lawyer. So let's be real here. Yeah, this is what Mike said. He said, for 40 years, the Lord's told me not to defend myself. But in this situation, Stuart Greaves is defending you and you have submitted yourself to him. I guess that's the Lord. Um, Vols is now on stage making these statements. I guess that's the Lord. Your lawyer all this stuff. It is a, it is a show trial is kangaroo court in the house. And, um, you know, and we see all these threats too online of like, everybody better lawyer up, you know, like, it's like, you know what guys, this is, this is mind blowing and it's very sad. And Mike, this will not go away. This will not go away. I just want to remind people too. It's so funny. I was telling, um, there's actually nothing funny about all this, but I was saying like, I don't know, um, who Eric Vols is. I mean, I actually, like he's probably a great guy, but who knows? I don't know. Who, who knows who can trust in this whole thing, but he's probably a great guy. But literally he's in this thing where you have these people like this is a group of zealots, just FYI. And when I say zealots, I mean, people that skipped meals for 40 days, people that prayed from midnight to six, people that gave their lives to this ministry. They sacrificed their their time and their family, their energy, money, uh, careers to be a part of this. And Vols came out in his very first statement and said, the online or the uh, armchair investigators will pick this apart. Bro, we're not armchair investigators. We are literally the people that give a crap about this. We're the people that care about this. Like, you're making you you have a job doing this now defending mike and you're saying that you you know maybe you care about it maybe you believe you actually said in a in a statement that you do not take clients unless you believe they're innocent so my question is innocent of what a criminality is that what you're saying but what about all this stuff what about jane doe's allegations right what about the clergy sexual abuse you have put yourself in the middle of a fight with people that literally our dog in the fight is truth and justice our dog in the fight is not our, our job or this thing our dog in the fight is literally going we don't want this man influencing our children we don't want this man um, having influence to create more systems and structures and perpetuate what's been going on i'm telling you this is a swarm and it's not just armchair investigators. It's 18-year-olds that have lived under the CEC and watched abuse happen from leaders. It is 25-year-olds that have been stalked by leaders and um, and brought um, abuse allegations to top-level leaders, and it didn't get handled properly. And those leaders did not call the police on the behalf on behalf of the 18 or 19-year-olds. They say they recommended that they call the police, but they didn't call the police. It is an organization that has perpetual problems. And I'm telling you, this is not going to go away. This is not going to go away. I'm deeply committed to respond. I'm feeling so intense today. It's, I guess it's because we haven't talked in five days. <laughs> I am deeply committed to respond to those complaints. Um, oh, and he talks about like, we can minimize the divisiveness, continue to stay focused in loving Jesus and one another. Um, sometimes love hurts. 
I am deeply committed to responding to those complaints against me in the spirit of Psalm 1835, both now and in the years to come. Some who have spoken against me are friends. I will continue to view them as friends. Well, just, aren't you just something? Yeah. <laughs> I will continue to view them as friends. It's still just all of this is just so self-righteous. Wow, he's so incredible. That's kind of like this this air and this aura of I will be this person. We will all love Jesus. Like even right down here, Jesus, I love and trust you. Okay, cool. I'm really glad. I really do hope that you still have your salvation intact, even though you've lived with this sin underneath. And and if the other Jane Doe's are coming out soon, there are other Jane Doe's just by the way, there are other Jane Doe's allegedly. Okay. So like, I really do have no eternal vendetta against Mike Bickle. I really hope at the judgment seat that he can like stand before the Lord and the Lord can say, ah, you finally opened up at the end of your life and made things right, kind of like Solomon or something like that. I really hope that. I actually want that. Like this is all like so freaking heartbreaking. But right now, this is Jude stuff. This is second Peter false teacher stuff. This is deception. This is preying on vulnerable people stuff. This is danger and darkness. Yeah, I do. I do want to like agree with that and say, I know we're super intense about this, but that's because this is this is actually outrageous. It's outrageous. It, it deserves outrage right now. So, um, but we're not anti Mike Bickle. We're not anti IHOP. We're not anti anything. We are pro justice, pro Jane Doe, and pro truth. Um, so, and he's admitted to doing something with Jane Doe. Just want to remind you all that are like, wow, he finally admitted. No, like, let's move on. No, he's admitted to doing something with Jane Doe, just not the more intense sexual thing. So he's admitted to it. Now, what else is there that he's not admitting to? Because he's lied for 25 years. And he's going to wait for a Royce report to come out and then respond to it. And they're just making videos and and pre-making videos and statements to just kind of keep things clean and professional. And I'll tell you what the next move is. This is what I see as the next move. Um, this is just my my. Let's go so in armchair investigating. Right, this is their next move, guys. So with them releasing those emails of Jane Doe gloating over Mike Bickle, they are going to try to make this a consensual affair, a consensual affair, Correct. consensual relationship, um, which. The um the emails coming out aren't actually a smart move because it just proves everyone's point that she was groomed since she was 19. You know? Yeah, yeah. But the thing about it is, too, your audience um is not as dumb as you think. And they are educated now and becoming even more educated On about grooming. clergy, sexual abuse, about grooming. And they know that this is impossible for this to be a consensual affair. It's impossible. You know, so yeah, so yeah. Good Unless, luck with that. And, and I mean, there is it certainly a generation that will just say, "No, it's consensual." He's forty-two, she's nineteen. She must have been a Delilah. She must have he been a prophesied to her that they were going to get married, that his wife was going to die, and they were going to get married. Allegedly, she's he's, he's not admitting to that, but she said her, that yes. And he groomed her. So it he let's say. I don't know, allegedly brainwashed her. So it wasn't consensual. It does happen, you know, and when you're skipping a lot of meals, fasting and praying a lot, and you're around a very, a guy that says he's been visited by the uh, the Archangel Michael, and he's um, called and chosen to lead the end time prayer movement of young people to bring in usher in the return of Jesus. That's a pretty big deal. Okay. That's a pretty big deal. So whatever you think of that, uh, Jane Doe and multiple other young people believed it. And he obviously uh, held his cards close for a little while and then suddenly just kind of had a moment with her and then had another and then prophesied to her that his wife would die and that she would uh, lead the prayer movement with her and marry marry him. Well, Jane Doe's husband says that Jane Doe's husband says in the Royce art report, we're just reporting this, that when he brought that up to Mike, Mike said to him, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I meant that if that that if uh, Diane dies, then she would help lead the prayer movement with me in the future. Jane Doe would help lead it. I I thought she was too pure of heart to th take it any other way. Are you hearing this, guys? You think Jane Doe's husband has like, I'm telling you, they already lost support. There are I have other people that are telling me that their ministries are losing support because they're speaking out about this. Like literally in the advocate group, the big names that you know of, like the big names. So you're going, well, they're just trying to raise literally 
one of the leaders, allegedly, one of the leaders at IHOP came out and said to the group, to a room of leaders said, allegedly said, the only reason why this big name, former leader at IHOP, pretty big name is doing this is so that he can raise this amount of money for his ministry. I'm telling you this, when you come out against a big leader like Mike Bickle, you don't gain money, you lose. There's nothing to gain here except for justice. All right. All right. For an extended season, I will not engage in public ministry, conferences, social media, Zooms, et cetera. I see this as God's delayed loving discipline in my life. Uh, real quick, I don't even know why you even want to talk about, you know what I mean? Public ministry already talking already. about, yeah. like we're not there. We're not there. But anyways, he said, I will look to other leaders. I'm thinking Rick Joyner, Rick Joyner, Rick Joyner. Uh, who, who's it? Chris Reed, uh, which I don't, I, I don't think I can't yet. say that. Not yet. I will look to other leaders to determine how long this season will last. It may be long and it may even be permanent. Yes, I believe it should be. But either way, this is another thing that kind of contradicts the beginning of it because the beginning of it, he's minimizing everything he's done and acting like it was no big deal. Um, It was, you know, he's not admitting to the more intense stuff, but here he is saying that it's possible that he may be... um, what? Look at what? I will only re-engage my public minute preaching ministry if God confirms it through others. Yeah, I know that. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, but the fact that you're even saying that you will not engage in it means you know that you did something worthy of Worth being removed. Stepping aside. Worthy of being removed. But I know they already have a plan. I mean, we already heard Rick Joyner talk about the restoration. Literally day one. day one. Day one, he was ready to restore him before he even came out with this. It's like insane. Um, but I do love that he's letting us know ahead of time what's about to happen. I will only re-engage my public ministry um, if God confirms it through others. Again, we're ready for you, Rick Rants. Like, go ahead, tell everyone that he can get back on stage. I am at peace with whatever he wants. I'm, Jesus, I love and trust you. I won't comment on that, but I will yeah. say one thing that um, our pastor said one time, I think he was talking about Jim Baker and how Jim Baker got caught up in all that mess and he was in jail and somebody asked him, asked him if he like, when how did, did this happen? Loving how did, the Lord. When did you stop loving Love Jesus? Jesus? And he said, I never stopped loving God. I stopped fearing him. And yeah, the fear of God is not a popular message right now, but I think it needs to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah. And, and it's so true. Cause I, you look at this and as a person that, that was under this ministry for a very long time and uh, had my own disagreements and fallouts from like 2013 to 2018, but had incredible reconnection with top lead- leaders like Stuart Greaves and a decent one there with Dave Slyker for a second. But, uh, but like as a person that was promoting IHOP's teachings over the last five years and even encouraging certain people to listen to them and tracking with IHOP and knowing the way Mike talks and trusting Mike, frankly, trusted Mike to be literally the last minister on the face of the earth that would ever do something this dumb. Like it's it. So to, to read this, if you don't understand what you're reading and the tactics and rhetoric that you're using, th- that he's using here and directed to use in some ways, it's really easy to go, wow, man, he really loves Jesus. Wow, he really loves Jesus. Wow, he's really sorry. Wow, look at him. He's so humble. He's actually admitting to it. Wow, it was only like, it was like 20 plus years ago. It was like right before IHOP was getting founded. Guess what? It, it went into while IHOP was being founded. Four years is what Jane Doe says. But you read this and you go, ah, wow. Oh man, that's tough. Oh, you know, pray for me. Ah, pray for my family. Ah, you know, oh man, my my ministry and the fallout and the the division. Wow, this is Mike's brokenhearted. Mike's so humble. Mike's, wow, look at him. He's saying he'll step away even permanently if he has to. There's a lot of pull. It's called a concession and it's called a, it's called pulling your emotions into it. It's the exact same thing we ha- saw happen when they transferred, um, from Stuart Greaves to Eric Voles, he said, I've done my best. I have a clear conscience and you never know fully what to say in these situations. Pause. And everybody's like, clap, claps their hands for him. It's like, all of a sudden everybody's like, oh man, I feel free. Now, listen, I do not uh, envy any of those positions. But one thing I would w- would say is that they put themselves in that position. 
by not being forthright to begin with. They said things behind closed doors that were different than they said on stage. And then when they were caught in in actual audio recordings, they said, well, it was 1% different. That's your take on the percentage. 1% is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. We don't trust because this 1% that was known. And, and what's allegedly coming it out is that these things were brought to some of these people 18 to 24 months ago. So this is like in different manners, okay? So don't pretend like, oh, we know. Okay, listen, we know that official notice to the entire ELT was October 24th. We know for the legal purpose that you can use that in a uh, court of law official. But we also know that in the body of Christ and before the Lord, you knew and it was brought to you much earlier because we have emails of Bickle and Doe going back and forth. We're not dumb. We're not dumb. Okay. We just want to know what you've been doing. And we all want to actually move forward. We don't actually want to spend any more time on this. It's actually like draining. It's heart wrenching. It's painful. Like I'm seeing people resign and texting me like, hey, thank you for your videos. It's really helping us process this and walk through this. And I'm like, frankly, I don't even want to do another video. Like this is not it. I mean, for us to actually get to spend time together and talk because we run a business and we have three kids, it's nice to actually be in a, on a project together. But I'll tell you what, it is so draining and emotionally draining to be us all to be looking at this nonstop. It's like, but we're not going to stop because, because if we stop and just not just us, but everybody, then what's going to happen is they'll just put out their messaging and Mike will be right back talking to the world through Instagram and give it five years. And guess what? He's going to create another little movement that people don't know who he is. And they'll, they'll see old reports, be like, nah, it's probably not true. Like this needs to stick. All right, let me just read this and we'll comment and then finish. I honor and love IHOP Case community and will forever be grateful to them. They are the most remarkable people. They're truly marvelous comrades. I know the Lord is with them and his favor and grace will continue to rest on them. Pray for me, Diane, and my beloved family. They've expressed their love and support for me in extravagant ways with much sorrow, yet prayerful confidence in God's perfect leadership, Mike Bickle. All right. So any final statements on this, Christina? Or mm. Only maybe that's the only line I will agree with in this. Pray for me, Diane, and my beloved family, because I know his family needs it. They need prayer. But also you should have added, pray for Jane Doe and her family. I just don't know. That is actually like, like, Vols, why did you let this statement go out without it mentioning her? Like, why did you do that? You're the, you're the PR guy. Like, like, Eric, why did you let Mike apologize to everyone and admit to to doing something wrong to a victim, to a Jane Doe, and let him put out a statement without any public apology to the victim and the victim's family. Why did you, Eric Bowles, why did you let, Stuart Greaves too, why did you let Mike Bickle put out at the end, pray for me, Diane, and my beloved family, and IHOP KC? Why did you not, what, like, did you read through this before you put it out? Because this he is says not, it's a huge step in the right direction. I'm just so concerned. And and I actually believe that Vols, this is just me, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong many times. And and if I am, we'll just say, yeah, we're wrong. But like I'm going, wait, you're the PR guy? Like you're the you're the you're the PR guy for this. And you let him put out a statement that looks like this. It reads more like a sermon than an actual confession, more like a concession than an actual confession, more like a journal entry. And, and then you don't allow him to apologize. You don't remind him, Hey, just throw in a little sorry about that to the family of the victim. You know, it's been 25 years, Eric, that this woman has gone through this and with her family. And now it's coming out of, like for family, kids, all Jane Doe's, by the way, that will come out. It's, it's affected them emotionally, uh, it's affected their families for 25 years, 20 plus years. Okay. So why would you let him admit to at least one on occasions? I repented privately and God touched my heart and said, I forgive you. Great. Now, please, everybody pray for my family. Sorry to my family. Sorry to you guys. Why would you let him put out a statement and not say, hey, and by the way, I'm very sorry to the effect I had on Jane Doe and her family. And I hope that this can be made right. 
Why would you not put that in there? Well, probably because he's not actually sorry to her. He's actually, as much as he gives condolences and of, oh, I will always love and support and da da da, he actually uh, didn't want her to marry her current husband and is actually still living in a fantasy world about that. And that is why he wants to try to release these emails because he groomed her and brainwashed her over a period and over a series of time from the time she was 19 years old as a young girl to the point where she finally was triggered by the Bill Cosby story. I'm not going to say anything about that except for go watch the Bill Cosby story to get an idea. But she was triggered by the Bill Cosby story. No opinion from me, just that's what she said. That's her story from the Roy's report. And that's what caused her to bring this out. So. All right. Last thing I'll say about this, Mike Bickle's personal statement is it seems that he is sorry because of the timing of it, because it came out after the Roy's report. It seems that he is sorry that he got caught and because of the wording in it, it's, it's just doesn't seem genuine at all. So it's one of those, like when you're a kid and your parents are like, you're just well, sorry you got I caught. I literally tell our son to apologize to our daughter all the time. And he looked and he's like, oh, hey. yeah, I might like, give her a hug. And he's like, oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> it, it just the timing of it, everything that's happened for the past 40 days, it, it seems he's sorry he got caught, unfortunately. So pulpit but. pulpit protectors versus voices for the voiceless. All right. That's what like, I'm going to just say this. I'm getting like crazy bold right now with all this because it's just, I'll just say this though to the, oh, go check out Johnny Enlow on uh on the elijah streams last week we'll post it oh, like he did an incredible breakdown of basically exactly what you're watching happen exactly. here we should share that video it was incredible because people sent it to us because he mentioned our podcast on the breakdown of the mike bickle emails but then he went on to tell not about mike bickle but about his own personal experience 20 plus years church ago where there was spiritual manipulation where there was sexual abuse sexual misconduct and he went on to tell his story and explain how it all happened and it was just it was incredible the line by line it, it, line by line matching side by side of how when the allegations come First, he got sued for like $20 million from the ministry. And that's the thing. Like, we're, we're very aware that this big ministry with lots of money is going to like get real, pretend like God's defending them, but they're going to flex up a little bit. We're very aware of that. But like, here's what happened is they, they of course, had to pull those away. It was just, it's veiled yeah, threats. It's veiled threats because, um, because they don't want this. They don't want this stuff to go to a court of law. I like, I have... Uh, sourced information that says that it's possible that I just know that they don't want this to. Whenever you go to court, which we know this because of business reasons, you have to go into a period of discovery where you give up your like emails, phones, everything. They don't want that. To happen. They don't want that. They like he told her, according to the Roy's report, allegedly he told Jane Doe to delete their email communications allegedly okay so so like they don't want this like, to go in there johnny enlow is a respected man in the prophetic community charismatic community whatever you think about um whatever all you listeners because we have people on the cessationist side calvinist people we have people that are full on in the prayer movement bethel whatever whatever you think about all this stuff um like johnny enlow is a respected man of integrity that literally called out power and abuse from and got sued for it and this and it got dropped and it ended up that like the guy ended up getting uh, caught because Enlo did something about it. Then he found that there were 10 other traveling ministers that would come through there, that they all had Jane Doe's and it was confirmed, but only because he started to call it out. What is behind the veil? Te tear the curtain, right? Tear the curtain, rip the veil. We want to see what's behind the veil, okay? We want to see what's behind the veil. We want to see the truth come to light. Um, but yeah, watch Johnny Enlow because I think, and if you guys are connected to Johnny, like have him, we would love to talk yeah, to him if he's, to if he'd be willing to talk to us because his story and the way he, the way he talked about it, he said it like turned into the mafia. And that's what we're watching happen. So uh, uh, one thing about mafia leaders is they actually are loved and respected by lots of people. They're loved and respected by their communities. 
But when it comes to the people that they abuse, they have a few of them. They have 10 to 15 that they're abusing and they're controlling mind control, kind of like Keith Raniere, right? From if you watch The Vow, the documentary on uh, on Amazon Prime. Um, I'll warn you, there's some there's some F-bombs there. But if you listen to David very, Slyker, very... then you're used to that. So it'll be fine. That too. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh wow. But go watch that if you're if you want to kind of see how these things progress. Um, not because they're a Christian uh group at all. They're not. They're just like a self-development group that at the top tier, there's millions of people involved. At the top tier, there was this type of thing going on. And with the top guy with the top tier of women. And so that's what uh, Johnny Inlow uncovered. And so you have in the mafia, you have these people that protect the main guy because the main guy helps them. The main guy mm -hmm. helps their position, their power, their money, their influence, their speaking money. gigs, their circuit, money. their all this stuff. And then uh, when allegations are brought, they go, no, no, no. Why are we protecting? Well, because number one, we really like him and trust him. He could never do this. Others know, yeah, he actually could. I know what's behind the scenes, but let's not let that get out because then it'll affect everything. And what about all the good that this has done? What about all the testimonies and all the good this has done? Oh, Jane Doe, do you want to ruin that for everybody? That's literally the turn that they do. They turn and burn Jane Doe. They turn and burn the advocate group. They turn and burn people that just speak up and like, oh, you're just a woke mob, green hair, da, da, da. Do you know what my vote was in 2020 and what it will be in 2024? No, you don't. And it ain't woke, okay? So like it has nothing to do with politics or being woke. We just are watching. We actually believe the testimony of Jane Doe. And we believe the testimony of... Alan Hood. Eric, have you talked to Alan Hood? Have you talked to him? Maybe you should. Um, we believe the testimony of Dwayne Roberts. We believe the testimony of the Jane Doe's. And so we believe what Mike said now too, that he's admitting to occasions of moral failure. We believe that. We just want you to be fully disclosed about that and not pretend like that's that's enough. We want the full disclosure, Mike. Okay. Well, that's, that's what we want. Um, and that's what the body of Christ as a whole deserves. Anything? Yes. One last thing, as you were saying that made me think, okay, so obviously Vols is there, but he's getting paid. Somebody commented this on one of my tweets and I thought it was a really good point. Vols is getting paid to take the punches. So although we will give them, we cannot be distracted by him. Good point. We must focus on the ELT because the truth is Stuart Stuart, you knew this. You saw this, this letter, this statement, Keep talking. and you've had this. So why didn't you put this out to the public? You know, why did you wait until the Roy's report came out that named you, Stuart, that you were the one that confessed to somebody it's true. that, yes, he had confessed, you know? Yeah. So I think that um, Bulls is a distraction. And for us to treat him as a Twitter troll is going to be the best option from here and to keep focusing on the people who are doing the real harm, who are the ELT and Mike Bickle. Yeah, I think so too. And, and I just want to take this real quick um, since you just went there, just back to, back to, uh, back to Greaves real quick. Um, so if you look here on the Roy's report, this was a week ago, um, which this, it, this forced their hand. Uh, let's see. See, Bickle said, if Doe goes public about these allegations, it will be the greatest betrayal of my life. This was in uh, early October, okay, to uh, to Jane Doe's husband. Now, look at this. In a private meeting on November 9th, Jason Carr, who was a section leader at IHOP Kansas City um, and loves the Lord and literally wanted to be there night and day worship and, and be there for like a lot of these people, they're leaving now because they've been there a decade, almost two decades. And they're going, well, we, I guess we need to get out of here because this is like, this is bad. So Carr brings this to Stuart Greaves privately, and um, he says, did Bickle confess to you on November 9th? And Greaves said, objected. Carr pressed, and he says, do you want to know what Mike said? Mike said yes. And then Greaves was kind of like, are you happy and satisfied? And I'm like, no, but that wasn't the point of me asking. Carr said Greaves also asked him not to tell anyone what he was had divulged. But then Greaves started to tell other people, so Carr came to TRR about it. Let's go down here to... Um, to Carr said his private convo raised other flags. He pressed Greaves about hiring a third party. So this is the public persona that the PR guy at IHOP KC is putting on. We're going to end right here. They're saying, "Oh, the um, they don't want the 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 
the advocate group is denying a third party to come in. We want a third party, but the advocate group is slowing it down. Really? Because before they ever had a PR guy, we pressed Stuart and the cars did. I think they did have the PR guy then. He just now became public. You're right. He'd been hanging out. Carr said he pressed Greaves about hiring a third party during the conversation. Carr said Greaves said he had no intention of hiring a third party like Grace or Guidepost. Well, we know their we know their excuse on Grace, but what about Guidepost? Because those firms would want to investigate everything at IHOP KC, not just the allegations. Guess what? There's a problem at IHOP KC, and I think it goes deeper than just Mike. And they don't want that places like this to come and investigate everything. And we actually would like to see a third party come in that specializes in this because the current third party that was offered up literally is another law firm that brags about working with. Oh, yeah. Do you, did we already read yeah, that? No, we didn't. That brags about working with churches and getting them off the hook. That's what this lady does. They get churches churches off the hook. hook. So what victim wants to go to her? And then literally the guy, PR guy saying, come to, if you've been victimized at IHOP KC, then come to this woman. She'll help you. Like, I'm sure this woman's great. I'm sure she's a fine woman. I have nothing to say against her, but I'm saying this is not the third independent, by the way. And people have asked us, why does uh, Jane Doe get to dictate who their lawyer is? No, it's not about their lawyer. This is about the independent third party that we all can agree upon. That Yeah, it's as- not about anybody getting to pick it. We're not saying Jane Doe gets to pick it or the advocates get to pick it, but they need to agree upon it. Yeah. Um. But I think this is- This is for another story. I think this is a big topic too that can be- We'll hit this own, in a couple of days. It's yeah. Own. And frankly, guys, we, uh, we, we try to get videos out daily or every other day. Um, and when, when big stories drop, don't think it's, it's because we're missing it. We're watching it, but we also know that these things develop and we're not the breaking news source, but what we will do is comment on it and give you background and do our best to give you insight. Um, we do pray for every person, specifically Jane Doe and her family, that there would be healing in their hearts and courage. We're proud of her for the courage. Lord, we pray for courage, uh, for them to do what needs to be done. And we, Lord, we pray for Mike, we pray for Stuart, we pray for Eric, pray for everybody involved, Lord, that you would bring the knife of truth to all of us, actually. Separate our soul from our spirit. Bring the knife of your word and truth into this. Bring it to every single person commenting on this, every single person looking into it. Lord, we ask you for absolute wrecking ball that brings truth so that justice can be done in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Peace.